Welcome to Policy On Demand's Week in Review. I'm Andrew Pryor. What would you tell clients are your takeaways from this week? I have three key takeaways from this week. First, the Senate is set to begin a two-week Independence Day recess period without an agreement on a revised budget reconciliation tax and spending bill that may contain business and individual tax increases. Talks between Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer and Senator Joe Manchin are continuing, but there are only four legislative work weeks remaining before the Senate is scheduled to depart for a month-long August recess period. If budget reconciliation doesn't get done in July, it will be much more difficult to get done in September when budget reconciliation authority expires at the end of the month. Second, President Biden this week proposed a three-month federal gas tax holiday in a bid to lower gas prices, but the legislative proposal faces a skeptical audience in Congress and elsewhere. There are concerns that the savings won't be passed on to consumers, that the revenue loss will harm the solvency of the Highway Trust Fund, which funds surface transportation programs, and that it would drive up demand while supply remains tight. Finally, the Senate Finance Committee this week approved a bipartisan bill to expand retirement savings incentives. The next steps will be to combine the finance bill with legislation approved last week by the Senate Health, Education, Labor, and Pensions Committee for Senate floor consideration and reconcile differences between the Senate legislation and a bipartisan retirement savings legislation passed by the House in March. Which question related to policy did you get asked the most and how did you respond? The question I got asked the most this week was about the fate of the Section 174 at R&D capitalization requirement. My response? There is still a chance for a 174 fix to be enacted by the August recess as part of budget reconciliation legislation or a conference agreement on U.S. competitiveness legislation. But if not, there is bipartisan interest and support for addressing it as part of a year-end tax package. There also is likely to be bipartisan interest in renewing clean energy tax incentives, restoring the EBITDA-based 163J business interest limitation, and preserving 100% bonus depreciation, which is scheduled to begin phasing down next year. And if, as seems increasingly likely, House Senate negotiations on U.S. competitiveness legislation spill into a post-election lame duck session of Congress, the conference agreement could become the legislative vehicle for year-end issues, such as tax expenditures and government funding. Where should companies focus their attention in the coming week? With Congress out for the Independence Day recess, companies should continue to focus their attention on global tax policy developments. Hungary this week doubled down on last week's veto of an EU directive on implementation of a global minimum tax, with the Hungarian parliament adopting a resolution opposing the EU directive. EU implementation may be stalled for now, but the OECD is continuing to work on additional Pillar 1 and Pillar 2 guidance, and the UK is getting ready to release draft Pillar 2 legislation. We may learn more about the path forward from OECD and other government speakers at an international tax conference next week in Washington, D.C.